today we're going to try to fix a rocking chair with a broken leg and all the things that we're going to use we're going to use a spider three inch quarter inch butterfly bit some of these uh, deck screws <coughs> it's got a, uh, a nice um, um, thing on the front of it star bit quarter inch long drill bit to make a pilot hole some 48 hour epoxy glue marina grade a wooden dowel rod of course screw gun so forth so on but yeah I just wanted to show you that before I opened it you know how to open a package of these right if you don't open them right you hurt yourself I hate these new vacuum sealed packages I'm just taking me a pair of scissors and whacking it off Now I saw this on YouTube, so I don't know how well it's going to do, but we're going to use the three quarter inch bit. Now you may be wondering why I didn't cut the other sides off of the package. Basically, so it'll make it easy for me to be able to get a bit in and just store it for later. That way you can keep, you know, your bits organized a little bit better. One of the biggest problems you, you may have when it comes to these old rocking chairs breaking off at the uh, stem. You can see how it's got the jagged wood. Like I said, I found this on YouTube. But you have a nail that was shot through to help hold it in place. Got another one right there. And the only problem is you got to have a special tool to try to pry and dig that out. So my first attempt is I'm going to try to drill down through the top to get what I need to bust through and hopefully this spider bit will cut through it with no problem and I'm going to use an eighth inch bit and I'm just going to drill me a pallet hole trying to keep as center as I possibly can which is hard. Repeat for the other side. Try to get the center if you can, cause it's not fun. Basically, I got me two holes drilled all the way through so I can have pilot holes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the epoxy and mix it in a two-part deal. You have red tube and white tube, or blue tube. This time I don't really want a lot. And we're going to be using some more later to help glue the die right in. And of course I hope this works. Try to get you equal amounts of each. As you can see, and mix it thoroughly. This takes about an hour to set up, 48 hours to finally cure. And we just want to dab a little bit down in there. Then just kind of put a little bit down in there. And 
Then you want to get some more. Put you a little bit here. And here. And then you want to try to center this on there the best you can. I knew I'm going to have some problems to clamping this because the rockers and all is going to slide. So I cut me a couple of those small blocks, put them out of the way, and just shoot them down in there. You want them there enough to, so you can clamp it. There we go. Take another block, keep it out of the way where you're going to be drilling. <clears throat> Alright, check your water rocker, make sure she's level. Okay, yeah, now you want to wipe off the excess epoxy that's oozing out with some acetone. You really don't want to know why that can spin up like that. Get that excess epoxy off on both styles. And if you got any on your table, workbench, wipe that up as well. And wipe it off your hands too. Well, I just talked with the wife, since this is her project, and she just wants me to just run these down in there and skip the dial rods. These are four and a half inches long. We'll see if that works, but I'm going to have to use a little bit of butterfly to drop this down a little bit so it's not bumping out. <clears throat> so, let's do that real quick. Perfect. Grab this other side real quick. Open your bits are pretty easy, just grab one in and pull. Okay. We need to drop it down exactly four inches. So that's going to be our mark right there. So we want to make sure it's the exact same distance. And this is way smaller than this diameter. I don't know if you can tell that or not. This is a eighth inch bit, so best way to mark is take a piece of duct tape. I like to fold one end of it over so it makes it easy to get your other end of the duct tape and we're going to run that drill bit all the way down in there. Mm. 
and we're going to drill right down through there until we hit that green spot. Make sure you have a SD3L bit, SD3L bit. Now you can see that little bitty fine writing. Repeat on the other side. Alright. Now hopefully this will last for years to come. She split open right there, so I'm gonna take some of my epoxy. This stuff's phenomenal. And work it in the crack. And I know, you're not supposed to have a crack. Mix up some more. That's the only problem about fixing old furniture. You never know when you're going to run an issue like that because it's old dry rot, especially if it's been outside for years. crazy we're doing this it might work it might not <laughs> Sand it off. 
until then wipe up on either side so you don't have too much of a mess to clean up basically it you wait until she dries I've got it fixed I'm going to leave this this on here for 24 hours and then we'll come back to sand this and go from there well we're on the second day we're we'll moving these things dropping these clamps down <clears throat> getting them out of the way sanding this spot here <clears throat> and then testing it I hope you can get to see everything good because our main project is to get this done we'll be right back I'm going to be using what they call a staple puller it's got special little grooves there to pull staples because all I need to do is just get underneath here just enough to pull these up without causing a lot of problems Still got the nails stuck there. I know you're supposed to have all your tools ready to go. But sometimes you don't. And it broke off. Well, that means you have to get a hammer out. <clears throat> Feels like the crack sealed up good. Now, like I was saying, if you notice yesterday, this crack was already here before I put the screw in. We just spread it open. And if I would have thought correctly, and if I would have thought correctly, I should have pulled the screw back out after I glued it and then clamped it. Didn't think about that until about four hours later. But we want to clean up the excess epoxy. I'm using a piece of 180 grit sandpaper. all right now that it's clean you sand it smooth I'm going to clean it up with a rat rag and one of my favorite cleaners that is amazing And that is Zep This stuff is amazing And the rag is already wet So That Now my wife's probably going to have me repaint this whole thing That might be another video um, Set up to do that but basically it's been sitting in my shop for I hate to say it five years with work and everything I am just now getting around to getting it but just go ahead and clean everything up this stuff's amazing uh, oh, you know sometimes you wipe stuff it doesn't come clean but like you see this side here let 
me bring you in on that so you can see movie just a little bit you see how clean this is and how dirty this side is I'll be right back told you I tested to make sure that it works properly so it doesn't break <clears throat> when I sit down in it well so far so good and maybe I'll do an update a year from now but anyway on the uh, next video or two I'm going to show you how to paint this thing seems to be sitting pretty good rocking pretty good that's how you fix a rocker on a broken rocking chair that's broke off anyway until next time well hello again this is Stan with Dietz surface detailing yes I'm the owner and um, you know I want to apologize for some of my older videos that are on YouTube um, those were actually for advertising purposes and the reason I put them out there was to draw customers um, and I know I use some clickbait in one of them how to whitewash kitchen cabinets and all you see in that video is actually um, images me talking for a little bit and then the images of the before and after of the cabinets and in between now it did show you exactly how I whitewash those cabinets and I do apologize for that so what I've decided to do from here on out something and if I can keep the routine that's one of the biggest problems is keeping the routine is to put out how-to videos throughout um, the rest of this channel and if you're in my area and when you do want to hire me to come do a job please let me know now on some of these things on repairing old furniture that I may show you it's it's mostly just that um, you know I, I did work in um, a um, furniture factory for 10 years and we refurbished um, old church pews throughout those years and it's one of the things that you know some of the stuff I've learned over the years um, I've been in this industry all my life you know so um, but anyway watch out for more videos to come and if you like this little short uh, sweet um, to the point of just talking about you know face talk talking head type video let me know in the comments below um, hit the like button and hit the the uh, uh, thumbs down if you don't like it uh, let me know how the quality of the video is the sound and all that um, I got a good camera but I'm still using kind of a uh, cheaper uh, shotgun mic right now eventually I'm gonna get me a lapel but with the cost of that I want to wait because uh, so forth watch for new videos I'm gonna have one coming out soon on how to clean a bathtub properly and also hopefully be able to show you some other images of things to look out for that you may not realize um, I got a couple estimates to go look at uh, some tubs and I need to call a lady back today about scheduling one of those to where she's got some staining going on she doesn't clean the tub she cleaned it the way I recommended it and um, well anyway there's some cleaning going that needs to be done and um, there because some of the stuff she's used in the past it's left some stains in the fiberglass uh, shower she has and that's very common with gel coat and using bleach and lemon products it's going to cause yellowing or darkening of the gel coat unfortunately that's part of the problem when it comes to cleaning tubs there's not really really there's not really a professional video out there to show you how to properly clean one 
without damaging it. Uh, I know that a lot of people like to use, well, we'll get into that in another video. We'll just leave it at that. And that, that one's coming soon. Um, but yeah, I did want to apologize for the older videos. Those were more for advertising purposes, trying to grow my business. And um, I've kind of learned since then that YouTube's more for training and how-to videos. So that's the way we're going to do that from here on out. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.